This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Local Color. Chris and I are here, and we're going to talk about the upcoming screenings of the Oscar shorts. Mm -hmm. That's a, on location. Memphis has this every year. It's sanctioned by the Oscars, which is pretty cool. Yes. And it's at uh, the Malco Ridgeway, the Ridgeway 4. And the shorts are always a joy. They really are. And these because are the, you, the yeah. documentary shorts. And what, what makes it a short is that it's less than 40 minutes. Um, this is going to be Thursday, February 21st. 21st, it starts at 7 and um, goes until. And with the documentary shorts, I'm guessing you're getting a mix between sort of light, more entertaining stuff and some heavier subject matter, too. Uh, not this year. No? No. This year, the documentary shorts are, these are pretty powerful. They're like a slice of life and social issues that actually put a face with the issue. Oh. Um, open heart. That's the documentary about two of the eight children from Rwanda. I say it's a bit of an adventure story. Yeah, it's a big adventure story. <laughs> These two girls are making the trek across the Sudan to go to um, the Salam Center, which is the only free hospital that does open heart surgery on the African continent. So it's pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, it's a pretty big continent to only have one place you can go no if you kidding. need to have that done. And, and geographically, I don't know where Rwanda is from this place, but it's a 2,500-mile trek. You know. Good haul. Yeah, for a 6-year-old and a 17-year-old. Um, and then there, is it Innocente or Innocent? Uh, the it, girl looks like, from the, it looks like Innocente. That's, oh. that's my guess since you're dealing with a, a, a family that is has its origins in Mexico. Right, and this is a 15-year-old little girl who, or young lady, who is an aspiring artist and how art is her passion and it is her driving force even though her dad got deported. I was say, now this, it takes place in San Diego? Yes, yes, and remember when I went to San Diego and I told you how the... Yeah, you said you had just seen an extraordinary number of homeless and that, and that it, it was... was like, Families. This this was not what we think of people on. The, these were like families. So this little girl's father was deported. The mother is trying to keep her and her two younger brothers alive, and it's their story of being ping ponged from, you know, shelter to cheap apartment to losing a job to you know, all these other social issues that come along right. with it, but this little girl hangs on to her art. And um, I think that that says something for the arts right there. It does, and San Diego is one of those places where it's so much more visible. You know, the, the story that you're going to see there is something that's playing itself out all across the country and everywhere, but because of the, the climate, you know, there are places all along through Southern California where you just, you know, it's a much more visible uh, well, and I was so upset and asked actually an officer of the court, you know, what are the social programs that you have to help these people? He goes, hey, it's beautiful here. If you're going to be homeless, what a great... And I just thought... Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful here is not exactly a program. Yeah, what a great place to be <laughs> homeless. Um, the next one is redemption. This is another story about people who live on the street and and working in a pretty hard scrabble gig they dig through whatever they need to dig through to get bottles and cans and redeem you know take them to the the recycling center to redeem them for money right and uh you know it really puts a face and a story with these people that when you walk by you kind of would like to just act like you don't see them. I, I uh, am on a pretty good speaking term with some of the folks in our neighborhood who do that, and they always sort of keep me up to date on what they're able to get for uh, uh, their cans, well, and it's always shocking well, how much they have to turn yeah, in. Yeah, quickly, to, we've got two more. Kings Point, it's the uh, 
folks that live in the retirement community. Mm -hmm. And then um, Mondays at Racine is the... Now that one sounds uh, like an uplifting story. The beauty shop that gives um, cancer survivors yeah. haircuts and everything and services on Monday. Anyway, up next, we have a lot to talk about today. Up next, Tracy and a very special co-host are coming in for an interview with Marina Pacini from the Brooks Museum of Art. Marina, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate your time. This is Zoe and she loves art. And so she's excited to find out about the exhibit. Zoe, what's your first question for Marina today? Well, what, why is the exhibit called, um, called Angels and Tomboys? Well, it's called Angels and Tomboys for a really good reason. It's an exhibition of paintings sculpture, photographs, and prints having to do with girlhood in the 19th century. And while most of the images are of girls being angels or angelic, there are also some images of girls being tomboys, which those images are much more rare, but at the same time, they're uh, really a nice reflection of what life was like for girls in the 19th century. Has anyone ever called you a tomboy? Well, sometimes. Has anyone ever called you an angel? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear. Um, do you, are you familiar with the word print? Do you know what that means? Uh, not really. Oh. Okay. Well, let's have a little conversation about prints. Prints are an art form that um, ends up making multiple copies of something. Artists make them in several different ways. For example, one way you make them is you lay down a block of wood and you take an implement and you carve a design into the wood so that the image that you're making is raised up, okay? You put ink across the top of that surface and then lay a piece of paper down and the ink obviously is only on the raised portion so then you get an image off of that. So it's rather than an artist directly painting onto something, it's using another medium. Now, what's exciting about making prints is that you can make more than one of them. And it sort of depends on what kind of a process the artists work. You can make anywhere from 10 to like 250. So it's a way of making multiples. One of the reasons artists like making prints is that they are less expensive than paintings, so more people could actually afford them. They were really popular in the 19th century because they showed people what was happening during the war or what um, people's houses looked like or, you know, illustrated stories. And everybody, well, not everybody, but many more people could afford to buy them because they were not as expensive as hiring a painter to come and make a painting, make a portrait, or to buy a landscape. Is it all for girls? The, no, the exhibit is not all for girls. We're actually hoping that everybody will come, no matter how old they are. Boys and men and grandfathers will uh, hopefully come see this exhibition. Uh, the work is really um, uh, a combination of really beautiful paintings, but also, or artworks, I should say, because it's not all paintings, but also really interesting stories about 19th century life. Now, to get at your mother's question, Remember, yes. a special room. There is an interactive space. Oh, yeah. um, at the same time, we also have up Romare Bearden's Black Odyssey. It's a separate exhibition of really fantastic works about Romare Bearden, or that made by Romare Bearden about Homer's Odyssey. And there's an interactive space in between the two exhibitions with activities for both exhibitions. And for Angels and Tomboys, you can go and um, there's some angel wings there. You can go and make that feathers. There's a try-on section with some really cool clothes that look like the um, costumes that girls wore in the 19th century that you can try on and uh, several other things that are also happening. Um, and I want to make sure that you come on Saturday the 16th. We're having a family day from oh, 10 yeah, to 1. Is. 
and uh, there's all sorts of really fun activities that are going to be happening. It's again, it's free from that period of time. Um, there's a lot of fun hands-on activities. You can see the exhibition. I think there are going to be performances. So um, I hope you will come and have a good time at that as well. How long will the exhibit be at the Brooks? It's up through the 12th. It actually closes on Mother's Day, oh, that's which sweet. is yeah. hopefully that's nice. Uh, some daughters will bring their mothers for brunch on that day and come and see the exhibition. What else? So you have the Bearden exhibit and you also have Angels and Tomboys, mm -hmm. but you guys are doing so much programming. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the other things going on at the Brooks? You guys always have interesting stuff going on. Um, absolutely. The one thing I want to go back to Angels and Tomboys for two seconds is sure. that Holly Pine Connor, the curator, <gasps> yes, is coming to speak on that same Saturday, the 16th at 2 p.m. Um, but we also have up now a really terrific exhibition. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to remember the full title of it. Uh, I think it's Andrew Softel, Where Water Meets the Land. And it's a, uh, an exhibition of photographs that Andy took when he was on a um, uh, um, fellowship uh, sponsored by the uh, U.S. Embassy in um, Bangladesh. And there are fabulous images of the beautiful. time he spent there. They're extraordinary. Well, thank you for letting me know about it. Uh, we will definitely take those in as well when we come to the museum. Thank you so much for coming out. Next up is Chris with some guests from Ballet Memphis. Ballet Memphis is always looking, it seems, for better opportunities to reach out and interface very directly with the community. I know I've enjoyed a lot of the, uh, the open rehearsals you guys have had over the years and enjoy bringing my twins to see the, the process and the commitment that goes on behind all of the lights and the, uh, the, the more uh, uh, glamorous parts of the show, but you've just started a new way. Uh, you've just launched uh, Spark, yes. I think it's called, yes. and the first one's already happened. It happened last night. Well, tell me a little, I mean, what, when people come out to meet the dancers and the choreographers, what are they the most interested in, in finding out about? I think there, I think people have a fascination with things that, um, that aren't part of their normal life, right? I think that goes um, for everything. So when they come to speak to us, I think people really are interested in what it is we do every single day, you know, and how it's different from, maybe different from their lives, you know? Right. Yeah. And is, how does, how is the spark, uh, how's this approach different than what you guys have done in the past with the, the rehearsals and the questions and answers and... I think it's um, not performance based. Okay. You know, so we're not, it's not an open rehearsal. We're not there showing ourselves dancing. You know, there's, an, it's not a performative element to it. So it really is just a conversation, like kind of trying to spark ideas, you know, um, kind of talk about different things, you know, um, that maybe the community would be interested in hearing. And I'm curious, what do you guys take away from the community? What, what are you guys able to bring back to Ballet Memphis? Um, I think that's a very interesting question. When we're able to interact with the community, such as like um, reaching out and asking questions, I think getting their feedback is really important to us. A lot of us have relationships with the people who donate money or come to see our shows, mm -hmm. and hearing what their experience was like enriches us as performers. Mm -hmm. What um, they saw in the art and how it affected them affects what we do in the studio as well. Um, so it's always an interesting way for us to give back and take away what we learned from their experience watching us. So. Do you find that the things that people are interested in are similar from event to event or does it change depending on what you guys are doing? Like is it, is it going to be a, a very different group of questions if you guys are doing Cinderella versus what you guys are doing right yeah, now? Yeah, certainly. I think that people, when it comes to more narrative ballets, people have expectations of those things. And when it's, when it's things like um, our upcoming show, Family Matters, people want to know what that is exactly. What does that mean? What does a, what does a dance performance about? Fa well, called? what does Family Matters <laughs> mean? What is it about? No, I, I think that this sounds like one of the more fascinating things you guys have worked on in 
I mean, you guys are always doing great original work. Yes. Um, and go a long way to dispelling this idea that if you want to see innovative original work, you have to go to a bigger place. Absolutely right. not. Um, I, th I think we make um, more new work than maybe any mid-sized ballet company in North America. Oh, I you think know? So, so. I think that's quite true. Um, yeah, Family Matters is um, a show that was put together. It will premiere this month and at Playhouse on the Square. And it's really just four pieces. One of them is new that I have choreographed. And the other three are, they all look at family dynamics, you know? And I think that's a really important thing for us to look at because we all have family and we all, you know, have our little stories to tell. And these dances run the gamut of experience, you know? So I was going to say, just sort of looking at some of the, the pre-press materials, I'm seeing, you know, that this is going to be, there's going to be some drama, there's going to be some comedy, there's going to be some satire. Can you, can you maybe break down the pieces just a little bit? Um, for sure. Yeah. We can go back and forth. How does That's that sound? Yeah, sure. um, I'm going to talk about Julia Adams' The Crossing, um, and it is about a family. It was her response. Um, she made the piece right after 9-11. So the piece is mostly about loss and um, how a family deals with grief. Um, and it's an abstract version, but she spoke a lot about it last night at the Spark Conversation. So that's one of the pieces on the program. Um, it's about a family dealing with loss. And so I think that's interesting as a viewer to see that displayed in front of you and then you can digest how maybe you've deal with, dealt with loss in your own life. Um, I have choreographed a piece that is one of the, the hopefully one of the funnier ones. Um, it's, it's, called, it's always risky with comedy. It is, it is, and I mean, I want it to be funny, but hopefully it has, it, it can have some resonance to it. It's called The Royal We. So I wanted to play with the idea of a royal family, you know? And I, like, because I think we have such an obsession with celebrity, you yes. know, and the whole world does, particularly in America, and we want to understand them and know them even when we don't. So I'm playing with this idea of public and private life. So Rachel plays the role of the queen in, in my ballet, and it's um, just kind of about her exploring her life with her family, you know, and a little bit of the public life too. We've got two more to talk about and only a little bit of time. Can we nutshell them both? Yes. Yeah, go for George um, and Batty. George and Batty by Shapiro and Smith. It's, um, it's a dance that is very physical and it's um, dark and it, um, kind of a little adult, but fun and great, great things. We think of dance as being very much a family thing in the Nutcracker, but this is going to be a little heavier, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, deep issues. Thanks to Stephen and Rachel. In just a moment, Mamie's going to be up with her guest, Johnny McPhail, to talk about the upcoming Oxford Film Festival in Oxford, Mississippi. Johnny, I'm glad you're here as ambassador of the Oxford Film Festival in Oxford, Mississippi, but I'm jealous because I want to be an ambassador for the Oxford Film Festival. How do I get to be ambassador? Hey, you come down to Oxford and we'll give you any title you want. We're going to lay out the red carpet this year and we'd love to have you. Okay, we now, would. what? this is the annual film festival. What year is this? Uh, the, this is the 10th. Wow. Last and, year was really and, good. And I don't know how you're going to beat it. Oh, good. We get b bigger and better every year, and people come come there from all over the world with their films and and to visit Oxford, of course, and a lot of them never leave. I, I love it there. If I could figure out a way to get there, I would. Okay, it's February 21st through the 24th. Correct. And the films are at the Malco. Malco. And then um, you also have some activities at the Lyric, right? Right. We're, we're doing all of our panels at the Lyric. Plus, uh, the Thacker Mountain radio show will come from there. and our, our That's Thursday night. That's Thursday the opening night. night. Right, and then we will have um, a premiere film by Joe York there, and, and they'll do a lot of other quirky, funny things. And now, too. Joe York's film is uh, the documentary called Ten, and it is the world premiere, right? Absolutely. That's pretty interesting. Okay, let's talk about juried films. You've got six narrative features, which I'm pretty excited because, <laughs> you know, being from Memphis and in the film community, um, Mark Jones' documentary, I mean, film Tennessee Queers in there, and have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. It, 
It is really cute. I think it's his best work, and I mean that saying a lot. I, I thoroughly with, enjoyed it. With Christian Walker. Yeah, Christian. That, you've been in some things with uh, Christian. Three or four films, and he's in some more there. He's an excellent actor, plus he's a great filmmaker himself. Christian. I think he's been, I think he's in like three films in Oxford. He, I better watch out. He may get the sash for Ambassador this year. Yeah, Melanie Addington's... Uh, Film S for Sally. He's in yeah. that, which is n not in competition, but well. Yeah. And then there's 18 narrative features from around the world. It's pretty cool. Uh, the United States, Canada, Germany, uh, the UK. There's Australia, France, Spain. Um, you know, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty hefty um, sampling of films from around the country, and the documentaries. I I'm really excited again because our Memphis own. Chris and Laura Jean McCoy, their documentary Antenna is going to be in there. Right. And then I would like to see the one called uh, Plimpton. Mm -hmm. It's about the actor George Plimpton. Right. Any, uh, any chance George Plimpton's going to show up? Uh, you never know. <laughs> we, a lot of these people from around the world show up. They love to come to Oxford, and we get so many entries now because people want to come back. And, yeah. Uh, and so uh, there, there'll be a lot of the people representing these films from around the world. Well, and Oxford Film Festival does such a magnificent job of portraying Southern charm. They welcome everybody. <laughs> they treat you like you, you know, you're a long lost family member that's right. back in the fold. And like you said, when people get there, they don't want to leave. It's just a great festival. Yeah. I'm really excited about. Uh, now there's five documentary shorts. I'm really excited about seeing the one, the Urban Herd. Have you heard about that? Oh, I have too. I've read about it. I'm really interested in how uh, a herd of goats can, on a vacant lot, can bring a community together and in, in love and harmony and, and all and that. And you know, it's really cool because it makes you rethink urban experiences True. and you know community revitalization and things like that. <laughs> Now there's five animation films, there's 11 experimental films, Correct. there's now the Mississippi category, you've got five Mississippi documentaries, uh, five music videos, you've got the Mississippi narratives, the, uh, and then like you were talking about, there's 20 films that aren't even in competition right. that are exhibition, not competition. Right. And Mike McCarthy from Memphis is... Oh, his, his, he's got two or three things in there his, this his year, doesn't film, he? The two he has, they're wonderful. They're based about Elvis and Tupelo. Yeah. And Mike, uh, he's a world-class filmmaker now. I can't say enough about oh, him. Oh, my but goodness. I don't we want to get either. other people upset because there's many, many more from Oxford. That's, well, uh, just, and that's the cool thing about it. You know, Oxford Film Festival has, when you go, you're right there watching the films with the filmmaker and the crew and a lot of times the cast oh. and... You don't even realize it until, you know, the uh, screening is over or until it's over. And I mean. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I always encourage actors and want to be actors to come and work that lobby. Yeah. And, and you'll meet them all there. Plus, this year, we've added a party pass, which will take you to all the parties that only the VIPs have got to go to. Oh, in that's the past. fun. And, oh, yeah. And so you can really. Are you going to karaoke this year? Uh, no, I, <laughs> I can act like I can sing, but I can't, I can't sing. Johnny, so. thank you so much for coming. Oh. I'm so envious of you oh, and your wonderful. ambassadorship. <laughs> oh, yeah, really. uh, we'll be right back for a wrap-up and a look at the new show at the Dixon. I wish I could look like those ballet dancers. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I wish I could but, look like those ballet well, I dancers. Wish we you, could look, both, you look fine. You do too, to me Thank though. You. But you know, we've got that mutual admiration thing <laughs> going on. I just wish that. But I know what they put into that. Oh yeah. And Family Matters sounds like a really cool event. Family Matters is going to be interesting. You know, Are you going to take the girls to the Brooks to see Angels and Tomboys? Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm really excited about that too. And then the Oxford Film Festival coming mm -hmm. up. Um, keeps you, growing and getting bigger, bigger and better. Bigger every year. And you know, this is the 10th annual pottery show and sale, All That's Clay, at the um, Dixon, February 22nd through the 24th. So it launches the same year as the Oxford Film Festival. There you go. Their 10-year anniversary, too. There you go. And it's really cool. This year, they've got uh, Mid-South Potters from Dale and Bryn Bauckham from Memphis, Ken and Ashby 
from Canton, Oklahoma, Joseph Eccles from Hernando. All over the place. Uh, from Boonville, Mississippi, Red Banks, Memphis, Evening Shade, Arkansas. You know, so we've got it all covered. Go and get your pottery on. <laughs> One thing that's uh, one that I'm going to, and Pat just called me right before I left I and said, don't forget, don't forget. Um, the Civil Rights Museum has teamed up with Macy's and they're doing this event where, you know, for a ticket price, you go in and you have breakfast and you get to meet the experts that do your makeup. And so for the ticket price, you get your makeup done, you have breakfast, they give you a goodie bag and, you know, you need to take Charlotte and the girls, or am let I, Charlotte and the girls a, go. Am I a winter? No, you're more of a spring. I think you're a cool spring. <laughs> I will take. You're I, definitely a deep spring. I will consider <laughs> taking Charlotte and the girls. I, I'm not so sure that I need a makeup consultation. I don't think you do. Just yet. I don't think you do. Um, so next week we got Bifus coming on for the Oscars. Have you filled out your beat Bifus? I have not. I haven't seen all of the. Uh, I haven't seen everything nominated this year. I am. I'm... I started having kids and still haven't seen everything nominated. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please come back. And we don't just talk about this stuff for our health. Go out and enjoy your local color. <laughs>